Up next, from Malibu, California, legal arguments concerning the constitutionality of kidnapping suspected drug traffickers from foreign countries and the constitutionality of the death penalty for convicted drug dealers. Third-year law students in the Pepperdine School of Law, Vincent Dalsimer Moot Court Competition argued the case before a panel of judges that included Justice Byron White of the Supreme Court of the United States, Judge Stephen Trott of the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, and Chief Justice Malcolm Lucas of the California Supreme Court. Mr. Chief Justice, and may it please the court, and for the record, my name is Eric Kirkland, and I will be addressing the Eighth Amendment issue. Your Honors, there are two reasons why the death penalty is constitutional in this case. First, on balance, the punishment is not grossly disproportionate to the crime, irrespective of a finding of death. And second, assuming this court... Uh, do you know of any uh, cases uh, where, the, where death hasn't occurred, uh, that, uh, uh, where a loss of life hasn't occurred, that, that uh, the death penalty has been upheld? And not by this court, Your Honor. However, we as a society have placed people to death for espionage when they turned over nuclear weapons secrets to the Russians in the midst of the Cold War. I feel confident had this court addressed that issue, it wouldn't have asked, where is the death or where is the body? Instead, it would have balanced the mere offensiveness of that conduct against the punishment. What do you do about Coker versus Georgia? Your Honor, I believe that supplies no bar for this case to go forward. Uh, in Coker v. Georgia, while upholding uh, the death penalty is unconstitutional for rape of an adult woman, expressly left it open for the rape of a minor woman. It realized there were two statutes, one in Florida that permitted the rape of a, of a minor child for that defendant to be put to death. I feel that this court has never expressly held that there, is, that there needs to be a death to justify the death penalty. In, v, in Greg v. Georgia, that express question was left open. Connor, finally, we as a society, speaking through our legislature, find the crime in which Mr. Motto... Uh, How about Inman? Inman v. Florida was a felony murder case, Your Honor. And in this case, while there's some analogies that can be drawn, it's clearly a different case in the fact that there's an attenuation uh, of the person. Well, Inman said there ought to be an intent to kill, uh, didn't it? Uh, Your Honor, I think the, ten the Inman and Tyson case balanced the death penalty against the felony, the underlying felony, and the murder, and decided which one should we weigh? Should we weigh the murder or the underlying felony? In this case, it's very distinguishable from those cases in that the underlying felony, standing on its own, in and of itself, justifies the death penalty. It is, in our society's view, morally offensive enough. It is a, a crime that involves the importation of a drug that addicts five in ten of its users, kills six in one hundred. Well, is importation enough? The jury in this case uh, was unable to find the defendant guilty of distribution. Is importation enough? Yes, clearly, Your Honor, it is, it is enough. Was there any of the facts uh, uh, traced to the death of any specific individual, the importation, importation of this particular drug? No, Your Honor, nor would I think that is a constitutional requirement. However, Are as you an using some kind of a uh, uh, tort market share uh, concept? Uh. <laughs> uh, no, Your Honor, I do not believe causation needs to be shown. Uh, in the well, but the, 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 uh, the jury found that... Uh, that this importation uh, caused the death. Yes, Your Honor. But, but there wasn't any evidence in the case other, uh, that other than your statistical model. No, but you never actually traced uh, any of the drug he imported to any particular death. No, Your Honor. However, but, the, but, but here where the jury found this, this aggravating circumstance, that what he did actually caused the death. Yes, Your Honor, they did. And that would be the clearly erroneous standard is the one that we need to apply to determine it. And, Your Honor, I believe that the, the jury, relying on evidence, felt firmly that 20,000 pounds of thunder dust imported into our society indeed resulted in a death. And from that, we, we must give deference to that jury and their unique characteristics to allow that, that holding to stand. Additionally, Your Honor, addressing the attenuation problem that... So, you, so your submission is, I guess, that whether a death was caused or not, uh, in importing over a thousand pounds of, uh, of thunder dust is enough of a crime to justify the death penalty. Yes, Your Honor, that is exactly my proposition. Do you have to rely on that to win this case? Uh, no, Your Honor, not this case. And I think on balance, Tyson, Tyson v. Arizona provides for the death penalty. We have, in the guilt phase of the trial, 
uh, a reckless indifference to human life was found beyond a reasonable doubt. That would satisfy the Typhoon v. Arizona standard if it was applied and fall within the clearly erroneous, erroneous standard of review. What's the clearly erroneous standard of review? What do you mean? Your Honor, that's when this court or any court looks at the facts and looks at the conclusion that were drawn and there's no clue, no nexus whatsoever to support that conclusion based on those facts. The Seventh Circuit recently described something that was giving off the odor of a seven-day-old dead unrefrigerated fish. And if it does, it's clearly erroneous. Yes, Your Honor, I think that would be uh, very... And you're saying this finding of fact doesn't stink? Uh, no, Your Honor, not none whatsoever. Well, what about the chain that we heard about? And there, isn't there a break in the link? I'd hate to plow over this ground, but there's a, a difference between just importation and distribution. Isn't that a break in the link that your opponent has said is so essential to, to, to trace responsibility back to a kingpin? Uh, Justice Trott, I would like to address that analysis in that it is faulty for two reasons, I believe. Their analysis has been applied. Uh, first, in this case, uh, it would assume that there needs to be a death, which I clearly believe there's no constitutional requirement for a death. And second, it is a unique crime in which the person most attenuated is most responsible. He profits the great, greatest, and also he is one that is able to stop the drugs. He's at the spout of the drugs, Your Honor, and has clearly the most ability to stop it. However, to, to follow the petitioner's argument is to allow the smart drug dealer or the, the kingpin to isolate himself while others do the dirty work, deal the drugs, cause the death, and allow him to insulate himself from the Franconian statute, a, a procedure that would be unjust, Your Honor. Furthermore, I would like to continue on uh, with the reckless indifference to human life is put forth in Titan v. Arizona. In that case, uh, in dicta, this court stated that there's some crimes that merely participating in them exhibits a reckless indifference to human life. I think this crime is such, is such a case. I think that merely participating and importing 20,000 pounds, in this case, of thunder dust exhibits a reckless indifference to human life. To continue on, to one more point the petitioner brought up, and that was the, I believe it was an over, overbreath argument, that the statute could deter some, some NyQuil manufacturer from uh, producing and sending drugs out. Uh, under, I, didn't, I didn't know overbreath applied outside the First Amendment area. Excuse me, Your Honor, has, <laughs> has it been applied outside the First Amendment? Yeah, t tell me a case. Uh, well, Your Honor, there's Broderick v. Oklahoma and Cox uh, I can't recall. Well, those are First Amendment cases. Yes, Your Honor. I, to my knowledge, I do not believe it has been applied outside the First Amendment. And they've given it greater deference in First Amendment cases to not to deter protected conduct, protected speech, as wearing a button in Broderick v. Oklahoma. In this case, uh, there's no real or substantial threat that the NyQuil manufacturers will not be able to produce and, and import their drug, Your Honor. So I would say that this is clearly not overbroad. In his dissent, Justice Peterson said that measuring the severity against uh, capital punishment, that what we're really looking for are crimes that are so grievous an affront to humanity that the death penalty, in essence, is the only adequate response. You think drug trafficking is a crime so grievous an affront that it deserves the death penalty? Yes, Your Honor, I do. Well, let me ask you a question. We, we sanction the use of alcohol. Uh, alcohol is a substance that causes the same kinds of uh, death and destruction that thunder dust does. Does that mean that uh, the distribution of drugs is somehow less serious than murder? I mean, it's the one we've outlawed as opposed to the one we haven't. How does that, what, what does that cut anyway at all? Your Honor, there's one clear distinction between alcohol and, and cigarettes from thunder dust. Is that thunder dust is on the opposite side of the spectrum. It is a drug that is so uh, highly addictive that it causes its users to act so uh, out of the ordinary that society cannot tolerate it. it. It is a drug that kills six in 100 of its users. It causes people to fight in the streets to sell it. Well, I'm driving, riding in from the airport, I saw this uh, sign uh, up in the street, uh, smoking caused 41,000 deaths this year, still counting. Yes, Your Honor. Is that uh, something that's so grievous an affront to humanity that it deserves the death penalty? No, Your Honor, clearly it's not. However, in cigarettes, it primarily affects the user, except for in public places where we tell them not to do well, it. Well, I know, it, but don't tell some people I know that it isn't addictive. <laughs> yes, Your Honor, it is addictive. However, people can smoke 70 years. It's not uncommon to smoke all, all of your life 
and uh, to never have an ill effect. And many of the effects are, are very prolonged if, uh, if they arise at all. Your Honor, thunder dust is a drug that can kill you instantly. It is a drug that addicts so many to and causes such uh, unordinary conduct. It causes the mother to buy the drug instead of feed her child. It is a drug that is so far distant and removed from cigarettes that no meaningful uh, analogy can be drawn. Is there really thunder dust? Uh, I, have, I haven't used any. <laughs> Winners of the Pepperdine Moot Court Competition were third-year law students Stuart Nahas, Eric Kirkland, and George Presley. If you would like more information, you can write to the Pepperdine University School of Law at 24255 Pacific Coast Highway, Malibu, California, and the zip code is 90263.